Problems for Local Theorists. The reason that the local versus global debate is so interesting and still ongoing is that the global side has some rather convincing responses. Recall that according to the load theory of attention, the degree to which the brain does early versus late selection depends on how busy the perceptual system is, that it depends on the perceptual load. So in the Sperling task, people could recall any four of the 12 letters, but that may be because they weren't doing anything else. But what if they had to do a task that makes the letters irrelevant? If you haven't seen something like this, try the following. This is an awareness test. How many passes does the team in white make? Go! The answer is 13. But did you see the moonwalking bear? This is one variant based on Ulrich Neisser's classic experiments on selective looking. This phenomenon is also sometimes called inattentional blindness. The finding was that when you're engaged in a challenging task, like counting the number of basketball passes between specific people, you could miss a very salient event altogether, such as a guy in a weird costume walking by. Unlike the reported letters in the Sperling experiment, here, many people just don't seem to see the guy in the costume at all. Now, this only works if you don't know what to expect. So if you want to test this out, be sure to try it on some friends who haven't seen it yet. So maybe the apparent impression of seeing all 12 letters is not because they don't need attention at all, but rather that it's just because attention was not experimentally controlled completely. That is, we hadn't given the subjects a task of a high enough perceptual load that soaks up all of their attention. If we had, the subjects might have filtered things out early on. Now then, we also need to remember when we talked about normalization. That is, within a given brain region or processing stage, when you boost the activity for a stimulus, you tend to also dampen the activity for others. So localists can think of attention as a gating mechanism for late stage access, or what we sometimes call read out. There's certainly some truth to that. So without attention, late stage access may in fact be limited. We have all experienced what happens when we don't pay attention in class. But it's not that attention doesn't change the early sensory representations either. It certainly does, as we learned in class three. If you need a refresher, go check it out. We discussed normalization in class 3.6. Specifically in the Sperling case, when we access a row of four letters, we're boosting the representations for those letters. Which means, given normalization, we're also probably dampening the representations of the other eight letters. So in a sense, you never really have detailed representations of all 12 letters, not really. As soon as you access four, you may well be losing the other eight. Maybe you have potential access to four of the 12, but you could have never accessed all 12. So does it really mean that you have consciously represented all 12 letters? Like Sperling said, the letters were in some form of iconic storage for sure. But did they ever simultaneously exist in your mind in detail? Using fMRI, Claire Sargent has shown that this kind of post-cue in an experiment like Sperling's can change neural activity up to as early as V1 and V2. Except instead of using letters, she used simple shapes called Gabor patches. As we can see here, post-queuing change bold activity in both V1 and V2. See the difference between the darker bar for activity associated with stimuli in the queued locations versus the lighter bars for stimuli in the unqueued locations. So attention, unlike what the localists would say, is not just a matter of allowing information to go from higher areas like the PFC. It changes the early sensory activity too. Another thing that global theorists may say is, well, when you see all 12 of the letters or the speckles of the hen, all we really see are summary statistics. 
the brain represents the content as around 12 letter-like things, or some speckles of average size X and density Y all over the animal, but not the specific details. This is an argument that global theorists like Michael Cohen have made. This could be related to how we see things in the visual periphery, too. You might remember from as far back as your high school biology class that you have cone cells and rod cells in your retina. Your cone cells are color sensitive, but they're mostly around the fovea, the region responsible for your center of gaze. So while your periphery is not exactly colorblind, it isn't nearly as color sensitive as the center. So then how do we seem to see the world as relatively uniform in terms of colorful details? Well, we have also discussed receptive field size, which is somewhat like your pixel size or spatial resolution. The receptive fields are also known to be much larger in the periphery than they are in the center. Now, overall, there are many more neurons dedicated to processing near the fovea. So taken all together, one might expect vision to look like this. That is, not so colorful and somewhat blurry in the periphery. But don't we see things as more uniform, more like this? In everyday life, when we aren't told to look for such things, can we even tell the difference? Here are those two images side by side. So maybe we don't really see that much detail, like the globalists argue. And of course, you can always try out this little experiment. Stare at one word while you're reading and see if you can read some of the words that are in your periphery. Do this while maintaining fixation. It's very difficult to read in the periphery, if not outright impossible. So what you see in the periphery, in most cases, might be just that something of a certain sort is there, but not the details. When the localists claim that you experience all 12 letters, maybe they would be wrong to think that we experience all 12 letters as letters with specific identities. Maybe all we experience is the summary that there are some 12 letter-like things out there, just without the details. At this abstract level, maybe access and subjective experience are the same. It's not like you experience a lot more than you access. You can think about the fact that there are 12 letter-like things there, and that might be all that you're experiencing. And this summary, according to some globalists, might be represented in the PFC. So your conscious experience may depend on the PFC, unlike what the localists say.